Do you um, can you just talk to us a little bit about how you're feeling after that? Yeah, the the meeting that you have with players and staff when when your season's finished and you don't achieve what you want to achieve is always a really challenging meeting because um, you know that group's not going to be together in its entirety again. So, um, you know, there's a, it was a lot of disappointment. You know, I thought when you talk about the the game, um, you know, we we had good runs, but we also had some um, some down patches. And the one down patch, you know, I think it was end of the third or start of the fourth, um, that got them a pretty good, pretty hefty league. And you know, we still made a fight back. And so, you know, I can't question some of those areas of the game tonight. Um, you know, Adams, we've done a good job for the series, and then. You know he has. I think he has 21 in the in the in the second half, and um, you know credit to him. He's, there's a there's a he's a pretty tough kid, and um, you got you got going a little bit. But um, you know the man next to me, Shay Ely, you know there was looked like some really tired bodies out there. He was one of them, but he just absolutely never quit. And whether that was taking two or three people on to get to the rim. Um, whether it was be defending at a crazy high level or just bouncing out of nowhere to give us an extra p possession on a rebound, you know, I thought he was exceptional tonight. Well, we've obviously seen the result, but how hard is it to adjust when you lose your captain and your best shooter an hour before tip off? Yeah, you know, we had we had some idea at shoot around today um, that he was not going to be available, but. Um, yeah, it's kind of you know what we did as a club to you know build this roster when we brought Udo Barber in for exactly this scenario to say were we going to lose a possibly lose a player to COVID or injury or and that was the insurance policy as a club that we did a really good job of of doing and, and you know Caleb got injured and Bubba comes in and we win the game in Perth and um, you know CG goes down here and. Um, you know, we've had that extra body that was ready to step up, and so I'm really pleased with the club about how we we managed the roster this year. But you know, we, this whole series we couldn't shoot over 20% from the three-point line, and tonight we struggled to shoot over 50% from the foul line and missed 10. Um, and you know, we we got enough stops to to win the basketball game, even though they had some you know moments and some patches that were really good. Um, but yeah, we just couldn't throw it in the ocean the whole series. You talked about uh, it, it, you know not achieving your goals. Does it feel like a, a lost year or a missed opportunity to you? Not a lost year. You know, we did some we did some great things to win a minor premiership. Um, you know, to see the development in different people, to see you know Shay win six man of the year and, and to me was defensive player of the year you know what Joe's growth was this year to see Whitey come back from injury to put a bigger load on Chris this year as a score you know there's so many you know so many great things that happen um, so yeah not a lost year but certainly a, an opportunity missed to to go and be in a final with Sydney which um, you know, I think would have been amazing for Sydney Melbourne rival in a grand final. Shay, you, oh, sorry. Shay, you've um, put in a sensational personal effort, but the team hasn't achieved. Can you talk about sort of how those feelings kind of clash? Um, yeah, and, I mean, it hurts um, to lose this way. Um, you know, I felt like we had the team to, to go on and um, win this championship, but, um, you know, we fell short, um, you know, Having CG out was was a big loss for us. Um, you know, we we did enough. Um, we just couldn't score um, in one patch of the game. Did you feel yourself you needed to sort of take it on because CG was out? You needed that extra scorer. Um, yeah, in a way, I, I just felt like we were a bit stagnant. Um, you know, I kind of felt like we were, were trying to find Joe and just we just couldn't couldn't get passes. Um, to him in the post, um, you know, we were pretty bad in the area, um, trying to feed Joe. Um, you know, I had four turnovers trying to, trying to get that ball to, to Joe and, um, you know, we just needed to do a better job um, in getting him shots. 
Was it it's strange, atmosphere for you, just given that, I mean, obviously, Tom Payne is usually pretty heavy parochial Melbourne. There was a lot of Jack Jumpers noise and support there. Yeah, it was, you know, it was good to see, um, you know, um, fans back in their team um, for the first year and, you know, credit to them. They're, they're a great team. Um, you know, they showed um, the fight that they needed to, to get to the finals and, you know, um, it was tough. It was a tough series um, and, you know, yeah, all the best to them in the final. Dean, can you talk a little bit about what happens from here? Does the group get back together as a group from here and do end of season review and that sort of stuff? Can you just get, shed a bit of light on that for us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get together, um, put our plans together in place uh, very soon because we've got people that uh, have got commitments straight away and some of those are NBL1, some of those are uh, different commitments. So, yeah, we'll try and get those exits as um, organised and quickly as we can done and um, fulfil the commitments to the club. And, um, and then, you know, already teams are heavily working on free agency and so you know that's the next dive for the coaches but yeah it's just a normal process after the season um, but yeah I want to talk about you know what Scott Roth and, and that Jack Jumpers team has achieved this year and it's a Cinderella story that's continuing right now and um, credit to them you know I talked about the game you know the other night down there um, today and that packed place with a you know, the the gym was the noise in that gym was absolutely amazing and if we have NBL expansion that's going to be like that and bring that kind of energy to our league um, I'm all for it because that was you know it was just a great experience being in a in a in a finals game in that atmosphere down there and um, you know I hope they go on and, and and really really challenge Sydney in the final and make it a, a really competitive final. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that matchup and do, do you think Jack Jumpers can beat them? Uh, Jack Jumpers can beat anyone. Like, the, you know, they're so committed defensively and, and, and Sydney um, are just so talented offensively. And so, um, you know, it's, it'll be a, a battle of, of two styles a little bit. And, um, you know, over the course of five games, you know that um, Jack Jumpers are are never going to quit on any possession and I'm sure they'll they'll have some patches where they really make some runs and, and Sydney will get hot for patches where they make a lot of shots so um, you know I'll be I'm looking forward to it and um, you know this was a hell of a tough series that um, you know has prepared you know the jack jump as well for, for what they face um, moving forward. Thank you gents. Thanks Mick. Any final questions? Chris, I, I had one for Shane, if he doesn't mind coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Shane. Um, it's a difficult time to ask you this question, but you've had an incredible season. Are you proud of what you've been able to do personally this season? And in some ways, do you feel like, like Joe keeps telling us, that maybe it's the wider community that's just only starting to notice everything you've been doing for a long time? Um, yeah, you know, it's credit to Dino and um, the coaching staff to, for trusting in me and um, you know, credit to the boys for kind of getting me in spots that you know I can just play my role. Um, yeah, I always say I'm a, I'm I'm the greatest role player because um, whatever you ask me to do, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll try and go out there and, and do it. Um, but yeah. Just quick thing before I let you go, guys. Dean, following up from that, how proud are you of what Chase been able to to do and what sort of player he's been able to turn himself into? Yeah, you know, you look at since he's been with us and, um, you know, been with Mitch McCarron and, and Delhi and, um, you know, there's there's just moments um, throughout these seasons to say, you know, he's so close to or better at different times than, than the guys. Um, and so, you know, that's why he ends up starting, you know, the last how many games and um, because he's just so valuable to the team in... in both at the offensive end and, and the defensive end, and um, you know, just love the the growth as more of a, a complete kind of player. Um, and we saw, you know, at times over the couple few last few years that he, we asked him to cook himself in four minutes, and now we're asking him to play six minutes straight. And just to see the motor um, continue to grow and be able to play at that high level um, for, for for longer. So, you know, what do you play thirty minutes? tonight or something like that and um, absolutely spent and you know you're going to get that from him absolutely every game.